Hello and welcome to our episode today that deals with the various attributes of reporting. Our subject expert is Dr. Saad Bin Zia and I am Amrita Ghosh Kumar. Dr. Saad is a seasoned journalist and researcher with more than a decade of industry as well as teaching experience. Today's topic deals with seven major attributions of news reporting, namely the attribution of off the record, the attribution of embargo, attribution of pool, attribution of follow-up, attribution of advocacy, attribution of investigation and the attribution of interpretation. Off-the-record reporting. In journalism, off-the-record means the information should not be used in the story unless the reporter can confirm it through another source. Off-the-record information is offered to explain or further a reporter's understanding of a particular issue or event. Usually, a person speaking off-the-record is identified by a descriptor such as a source, a senior insider, a party official or a colleague. Sometimes they may be given an alias so the story has a strong narrative and the audience can identify with the source's plight. The important point is that the identity is not revealed. There is another form of off the record. That's when neither the identity of the source or the information they have passed on can be revealed. This is important when someone needs a reporter to know the context of a story but cannot reveal their identity or the actual information because it would prejudice them. Attribution of embargo. In journalism, a news embargo or press embargo is a request by a source that the information or news provided by that source should not be published or broadcast until a certain date or certain conditions have been met. An embargo is a hold put on the reporting of news stories based upon a predetermined date of release. A press embargo is an agreement between a news organization and a source not to release a news item before a certain date and time in exchange for advance information as to its content. An embargo in journalism can be defined as a non-binding agreement between a source of information and a journalist or his media outlet not to publish a particular information given them until a certain time or until certain conditions have prevailed. An embargoed release is a media release or announcement that is shared with the media in advance of its publishing date. The release will share confidential information with the journalist but it is shared with the understanding that it is meant to remain confidential until the stated publishing date. The date will be clearly stated at the beginning of the press release. Embargoes are often used by businesses making a product announcement, by medical journals and by government officials announcing policy initiatives. The media is given advance knowledge of details being held secret so that reports can be prepared to coincide with the announcement date and yet still meet press time. Embargoes are often used by important sources such as companies, major medical journals and government agencies. One of the main purposes of news embargoes is to make the media aware of an event ahead of time so that they can thoroughly prepare for it and publish or broadcast the story accurately to coincide with the date the government, business or medical journal makes the announcement. Attribution of pool reporting Press pool refers to a group of news gathering organizations that combine their resources in the collection of news. A pool feed is then distributed to members of the broadcast pool who are free to edit it or use it as they see fit. In the case of print reporters, a written pool report is distributed to all members. Pool reporting is 
an arrangement for media coverage of events by which a limited number of reporters, cameramen, etc. are selected from the entire media core and permitted to cover the events in progress and then report their observations to the remaining members of the media. Pool reporting involves representatives of each type of media pooling together to cover an event. Pool reporting is an option when the site for an event or press conference is not large enough to accommodate all the reporters interested in covering the news. Pool reporters write a report or tape an event and make their material available to their colleagues in the press or broadcast media. The material is given to everyone at the same time. No one can use the stories, pictures or videos until everyone has them. Participation in a press pool rotates by media, not government selection, to different outlets each time a pool is required. This gives every news organization a chance to participate over time. A typical pool consists of a wire service reporter, a print reporter or blogger, a magazine reporter, a broadcast reporter, a camera person, a sound person and a still photographer. Sometimes there might be a single camera filming the event for transmission to reporters in a nearby room. Pool reporting can also be very useful during disasters. When a site is dangerous but reporters need to get first-hand knowledge of the situation and photographers and videographers need pictures. Attribution of advocacy. Advocacy journalism is a genre of journalism that, unlike propaganda, is fact-based but supports a specific point of view on an issue. Advocacy journalists serve the public interest by highlighting issues that appeal to the most. In an April 2000 address to the Canadian Association of Journalists, Sue Careless gave the following suggestions to advocacy journalists. Acknowledge your perspective upfront. Be truthful, accurate and credible. Do not spread propaganda. Do not take quotes or facts out of context. Do not fabricate or falsify. And do not fudge or suppress vital facts or present half-truths. Do not give your opponents equal time, but do not ignore them either. Explore arguments that challenge your perspective and report embarrassing facts about that support the opposition. Ask critical questions of people who agree with you. Avoid slogans, ranting and polemics. Instead, articulate complex issues clearly and carefully. Be fair and thorough. Make use of neutral sources to establish facts. Professional journalists criticize advocacy journalism because more often than not, advocacy journalists sacrifice the principle of objectivity. Advocacy journalism is also condemned for serving no public interest. Some critics denounce advocacy journalism because it is essentially editorializing or sensationalizing an issue in the print as well as the broadcast media. The editorializing feature is implied in the intrinsic structure of the news presentation. Some others believe that a hyperactive advocacy journalism may seriously undermine the credibility and repetition of mainstream media as an objective and reliable source of information. Yet another concern about the advocacy journalism is that undiscriminating readers would accept the facts and opinions advanced in advocacy pieces as if they were objective and representative becoming unknowingly and perhaps dangerously misinformed as well. Attribution of follow-up. A follow-up is a journalist's term for a story which is written so that you can report more of a story which has already been published or broadcast. Those extra details can be new facts, later developments, reactions or new issues which have been raised by the original event. 
what all follow-ups have in common is that they depend for some of their news value on a story which has gone before. Although follow-ups rely on previous stories for the news value, journalists should still treat them as separate stories when writing them. They should be written in the inverted pyramid style with the most important aspect of the news angle first in the intro. Although the news angle will usually refer to a previous story, your story will not be news if it only reports something your readers or listeners already know. The strength of the follow-up is that it tells your audience about a new aspect of an old story, preferably in a refreshing and lively way. Follow-ups are needed because one story on its own may not cover all aspects of an event or controversy properly. Journalists have to concentrate on bits of life and report them to their readers or listeners. Journalists impose space and time limits on their reports which do not always reflect how important the event is in the real world. A special feature of a follow-up is that it relies for its significance or interest on at least one previous story. Follow-ups are used for a variety of reasons. Some of these reasons are all follow-ups must contain at least one paragraph of background to put the whole story in context. Follow-ups are used for a variety of reasons such as continuity. Follow-ups help us set stories in context over a longer period of time and to explain the cause and effect. To satisfy curiosity, many news reporters raise questions, particularly, but what happens now? Having given your audience an appetite for the story, you have a duty to provide answers to those kinds of questions. Every time you think that you have finished with a story, put yourself in the place of your reader or listener and ask, is there anything else I want to know about it? If there is, perhaps you should research and write a follow-up. To add balance, the follow-up gives you a second chance to provide that balance. Also, major events or controversies produce large amounts of information. Your readers or listeners need time to absorb all that information. Giving it all in a single story may only confuse them. So you can split it up into a series of follow-up stories run over a number of days. Such reaction stories are vital in maintaining your repetition for fairness. Attribution of interpretation. Interpretive reporting is when a reporter who is an expert in a particular area gives meaning and relevancy for the reader to information reporter has researched and gathered on a particular topic. This will usually include some relevant history, interviews with experts, interviews with those of opposing views and an informed opinion about implications and trends. Interpretative reporting develops as the result of careful thought and analysis of an idea as well as dogged pursuit of facts to bring together information in a new, more complete context which provides deeper public understanding. It usually involves more complex issues or sets of facts than a classic expose. It reveals a new way of looking at something as well as new information about it. Interpretative reporting means that the writer seeks to find the meaning of the event. The interpretative reporter puts the event in its context. The interpretative story puts the news back into the cycle or stream. Interpretative reporting often comes in the form of articles, sometimes in the form of columns called news analysis, whichever the form these write-ups give the causes and consequences of events. The interpretative reporter goes beyond not only what is going on and asks what does it mean. Interpretative reporter looks for news beyond the spot news. Interpretative writing is a term that suggests a detailed perspective well beyond the basic facts of the traditional news story. The interpretative story interprets by adding detailed information and authority to the news. 
when carried out with competence and grace, it shows readers through the benefit of evidence rather than telling them what to think. Different authors give different views in regard to interpretative reporting. Among these are, according Lester Markel, editor, the Sunday New York Times, it is reporting news depth and with care, news refreshed with background materials to make it comprehensive and meaningful. Number two, it is objective judgment based on background knowledge of a situation or appraisal of an event which are essential parts of news. Lester Markle. Number three, it is about telling the reader everything he needs to know about a given development and all the essential facts in a way that brings the story to the reader's environment. Robert Boloff, executive editor, The Wall Street Journal. Number four, it is giving the reading public accurate information as fully as the importance of any story dictates. Catledge, editor, The New York Times. Interpretative writing therefore covers a diversity of format that are commonly described as death reports, a term that gained general acceptance after Neil Koppel of the University of Nebraska published a book called Depth Reporting in 1964. Depth means thorough, explanatory or descriptive reporting. Depth reporting requires an investigative attitude, a lot of hard work and the ability to tell a story in terms of what it means to the reader. Interpretive report may be presented in one piece of it, may require a series. It requires a lot of research and legwork. The typical depth story is developed news. The full flowering of interpretive reporting occurs, however, in stories that are not based on events. These are enterprise stories, trend stories, backgrounders, analysis, think pieces, investigative reports that are increasingly becoming the hallmark of newspaper journalism. They seek to identify the causes of evils rather than report on their occurrence. Such stories give the causes and consequences of evils. To develop such stories, reporters unilaterally set the agendas for content and sources have become actors in the production, not directors. The control that reporters exert over the content of interpretive stories, both sources and facts, makes it impossible to claim that personal opinion is absent. Professional acceptance of interpretive reporting since the 1960s has brought with it a number of variations in journalistic style and method. The new journalism activism and advocacy, adversary journalism, investigative journalism, etc. Interpretive or interpretative journalism goes beyond the basic facts of an event or topic to provide context, analysis and possible consequences. Interpretive journalists must have unusual familiarity with and understanding of a subject and their work involves looking for patterns, motives and influences that explain what they are reporting. Interpretive journalism overlaps with other forms of reporting, investigative reporting, advocacy journalism, in which journalists themselves, after interviews and reviews of documents and data, assert who committed wrong or what caused a failure. As in explanatory or narrative journalism or narrative news story, reporters make judgments regarding the most reliable sources and most trustworthy information. Attribution of investigation. Investigative journalism is a form of journalism in which reporters deeply investigate a single topic of interest often involving crime, political corruption or corporate wrongdoing. An investigative journalist may spend months or years researching and preparing a report. Investigative journalism is a primary source of information. Investigative journalism is also called watchdog journalism or accountability reporting. Various definitions of investigative reporting or journalism 
Professor Steve Weinberg defined investigative journalism as reporting through one's own initiative and work product, matters of importance to readers, viewers or listeners. British media theorist Hugo de Burg in 2000 stated, an investigative journalist is a man or woman whose profession is to discover the truth and to identify lapses from it in whatever media may be available. The act of doing this generally is called investigative journalism and is distinct from apparently similar work done by the police, lawyers, auditors and regulatory bodies. In that, it is not limited as to target, not legally founded and closely connected to publicity. Nils Hansen defines investigative journalism in his book Gravande Journalistic, published in 2009 as Critical approach. Focus is on what does not work and in one way or another can be described as anomaly. Important subject. Only a question of importance for the common good can motivate the amount of effort and resources that very well may have to be invested in the research as well as the criticism uttered in the publication. Own initiative. Journalists or editors decide what is important. Own research. The reporter gathers information and documents sometimes in spite of tough resistance. Own analysis. The information gathered and the documents are evaluated. An expert can assist in the analysis, but publication does not depend on what someone says. Exclusivity. The public learns important information that else would not have been in the open. Sheila Coronel in her book, Digging Deeper, 2009, defines investigative journalism as watchdog journalism, exposing how laws and regulations are violated, holding the powerful accountable. Mark Lee Hunter in his book, Story Based Inquiry, a manual for investigative journalists, defines investigative journalism as, investigative journalism involves exposing to the public matters that are concealed, either deliberately by someone in a position of power or accidentally behind a chaotic mass of facts and circumstances that obscure understanding. It requires using both secret and open sources and documents. Recap. In today's episode, we learnt about seven major attributions of news reporting, namely the attribution of off the record, attribution of embargo, attribution of pool, attribution of follow-up, attribution of advocacy, attribution of investigation and attribution of interpretation. Off the record means the information should not be used in the story unless the reporter can confirm it through another source. Journalists can use off-the-record information to uncover related facts or to find other sources that are willing to speak on the record. News embargo or press embargo is a request by the source that the source news or source information not be published until a certain date or certain conditions have been met. An embargo is a hold put on the reporting of news stories based upon a predetermined date of release. Press pool refers to a group of news gathering organizations that combine their resources in the collection of news. Pool reporters write a report or tape an event and make their material available to their colleagues in the press or broadcast media. The material is given to everyone at the same time. No one can use the stories, pictures or videos until everyone has them. Advocacy journalism is a genre of journalism that, unlike propaganda, is fact-based but supports a specific point of view on an issue. Advocacy journalists serve the public interest by highlighting issues that appeal to the most. The editorializing feature is implied in the intrinsic structure of the news presentation. A follow-up is a journalist term for a story which is written so that you can report more of a story which has already been published or broadcast. 
those extra details can be new facts, later developments, reactions or new issues which have been raised by the original event. What all follow-ups have in common is that they depend for some of their news value on a story which has gone before. Interpretive or interpretative journalism goes beyond the basic facts of an event or topic to provide context, analysis and possible consequences. Interpretive reporting is when a reporter who is an expert in a particular area gives meaning and relevancy for the reader to information reporter has researched and gathered on a particular topic. This will usually include some relevant history, interviews with experts, interviews with those of opposing views and an informed opinion about implications and trends. Investigative reporters deeply investigate a single topic of interest, often involving crime, political corruption or corporate wrongdoing. Investigative journalism is also called watchdog journalism or accountability reporting. That is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed this session. See you again. Till then, thank you and Namaskar.